right, I think we're gonna get started here. So to start off, show of hands, who's ever heard of no dig potatoes? A few of you, how many of you have tried no dig potatoes? All right, well hopefully tonight, if you've already tried it, we'll teach you a couple new tips and tricks and if not, you might learn something completely new. So before we even get into no dig potatoes, we're gonna talk about something we do out at Minokin Farm and that's pre-cutting your potatoes. So what I mean by that is, is cutting ahead of time by anywhere from a week to two months. So is there anybody in here that does that? And Leona, why, why is it that you pre-cut it? Tell me. Sure, yep, no, that's definitely a good reason. It kind of splits up your sprouts. We also find that depending on when you cut it, you can gain uh, some earlier emergence and more even emergence. The plants will have more vigor and will also be more resilient to adverse soil conditions. And what I mean by that is, is we don't always get to pick what that soil is gonna be when we plant it. Sometimes it's wet, like last year it was dry. So if it's wet, we can have some waterborne pathogens that can infect our potatoes because when we cut them before we plant them, it, that potato needs time to heal. So if those pathogens get into our potatoes, before it has time to heal, it can reduce yields. But there's a right way to cut them and how to know. So I'm gonna teach you all tonight how to age potatoes and when and when you shouldn't pre-cut your potatoes. So these are three different examples of potato seed. If it's got one sprout, that's considered young. So when we cut it, it ages that speed and it speeds up the process of which it grows when it hits the soil and that's what makes our emergence a little more even. If you have four to five sprouts, that's <coughs> middle-aged, so that's safe to cut, but we wanna go one to two weeks before we plant. Where the young, we probably have one to two months, depending on. And then the last one, old, we can tell that because it starts to develop that fibrous root tissue. We do not wanna cut that. We wanna cut that the day that we plant. That's really important because if we don't, we can develop something called potato no-top. And what that is, is where new sprouts will push the eyes out. So that'll reduce your yields potentially. And that plant does not do well to any stress that we have throughout the season too. And it'll also physically, or it'll age your potato tubers that you harvest. So you definitely, if you have something with potato top, you definitely do not want to keep those potatoes for seed for the following year. So to cut or not to cut? Young, uh, one to two months in advance, and then we want to hold them at 50 degrees. If they're middle-aged, one to two weeks, and then we can vary the degrees a little bit. We want to be at around 45 to 50. And like I said, if it's old, we do not want to cut them. We want to cut them the day that they're going in the ground. So, for those of you that do know what no-dig potatoes are, typically you take hay and you place it over the potatoes. But, we're in North Dakota, it's a really big egg state, there's a lot of different hay growing out there. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about selecting what kind of hay you want and the differences between the two, because whether it's straw, prairie grass, or alfalfa, there's a difference and there's different benefits that we get from them. So, we'll talk about alfalfa versus straw. This is just a standard nutrient test that I found online. It changes within every field, so do not go off of this, but this is just to show you that there is a difference between the two. But if we can look at it, calcium, alfalfa's got three times as much, phosphorus we have twice as much, potassium we have twice as much, uh, magnes not quite twice as much, but we're pretty close, uh, mag magnes we're twice as much, zinc, uh, there again, we're pretty a little bit more than twice as much. And if we look at iron, holy cow, that's a difference. So this is just going to show there is a difference between your hay. And also, I looked up at a publication today of your carbon nitrogen ratios. And we all know with our compost, you know, you, we want a specific carbon nitrate, nitrogen ratio. Well, it's the same when we're selecting that hay. Uh, alfalfa is a 25 to one ratio. So that breaks down way quicker than straw because that's an 81 ratio. So that'll actually potentially tie up some nutrients too. All right, so we'll get into planting our potatoes. It's very similar. You line them up the way you normally would, but instead of digging the ground, you just set them on the ground. 
this is a perfect time to add any fertility or compost that you were planning on adding and you just put it around the potato tuber. And then following that, if you have round bales, you roll out the hay. If you have square bales, you can cut your twines and spread it out. It's really important because all bales do come in layers, so you need to fluff it up and give it a nice fluffy layer because that makes it way easier for that plant to pop through. And I guess I will address this right now. I've been asked this every time I've ever talked about no-dig potatoes. Where do I get the hay? Well, if you're not on good terms with the rancher, there's several different opportunities, whether it's your local Tribune and the classified ads, the Weekly Finder, BizMan Online, Facebook Marketplace, all great places to find alfalfa hay or straw or whatever you choose to go with. So that's just good information for you guys. All right, so I'll talk about straw. We've tried this out at Minokin Farm. We find that when we roll our straw out, we need to secure it. So we use net wrap because we all know our North Dakota winds can be pretty detrimental to a lot of different things. Well, straw's included, so that's why we had to strap that down. But with our alfalfa, you don't. That's heavy enough to where that stays as long as we water it thoroughly. And same with the straw, we have to water that too. But Alfalfa is just heavier in general and it soaks up a little bit more of that water so the wind doesn't take that as quick as it would take straw. All right, so when it comes to harvest, it's super simple. All you have to do is grab that potato plant and a lot of potatoes come up with it. We take our potatoes off there, we throw the residue to the side and then we can dig through the straw and pick up any bigger tubers that have fallen off. So. That's, in my opinion, one of the best things about no-dig potatoes, it takes the digging out of it. And that's always dreaded by a lot of different gardeners I come to find, so this is just a great option for you guys. But if you're thinking, well, I don't have enough space to do that, I got another option too. So we're trying this out at Minokin Farm this year. I've found about it this winter, but they're called potato towers. So what that is is you build a ring and you can grow it in these potato towers and they don't take up a lot of space and it's still the same principles as no-dig potatoes. But I will say it's a little more work and a few extra materials that you don't need with no-dig potatoes. So the materials that you'll need, hay or straw, compost and topsoil, uh, cattle panels or woven wire, you can get them at any farm store, that's a great place to check. Uh, fence posts or you can use rebar as well for your posts. Um, hammer or post pounder, that really depends on what kind of post you got because if you have a bigger post, you probably need a post pounder if you're using rebar, hammer works just fine. Uh, bolt cutters or side cutters, that depends on the type of wire you get. If you get the cattle panel, you're definitely going to want a grinder or bolt cutters. If you just get woven wires, uh, side cutting pliers is just fine. Um, zip ties or wire, that's really on preference, they both work, zip ties are probably a little handier, but wire works just fine too. Uh, soaker hose or drip line, I would say this one's really important. So since it's in a tower, it's above the ground, we don't have the water holding capacity that we would if it's on the ground. So it's really important to get water and then if we add our soaker hose and spiral it, it really evens out the amount of water that we put across our tubers. So I would really recommend that one. And of course, potatoes. All right, so to start off, uh, the pros and cons of each material. The cattle panel, that'll be a lot more sturdy. I would say, like I said, it's our first year, we haven't tried it, but I would say a cattle panel would definitely get more than one year of use where I would be concerned about the woven wire. I think as the season goes, I think as, the, as it compresses and settles throughout the year, I think that woven wire is gonna get pulled down a little bit. So I don't know if we're gonna get more than one year out of that. Um, it's taller, so then we can do more layers of potatoes. That's a nice little benefit. Typically, you can get them between five and six feet tall, where woven wires, typically anywhere from four to five, depending on but you don't have to go with this either. Chicken wire would work great, or even, I know I've seen garden fence to keep out rabbits and things like that, so that would be an option too. Um, the cons, the cattle panel's a lot harder to cut, and it's a lot harder to bend. It's stiff, but I think once you get it bent in that circle, 
it's going to have some memory, so it'll be able to go back next year too. Uh, the woven wire, the pros, it's easy to work with. I made one yesterday, it was, took half the time, maybe even less of what it did with the cattle panel. Really f easy to work with, easy to cut. Cons, uh, it requires more posts because it's not as sturdy and it's shorter. So, and I think you're only gonna get one year use out of it too. So there's just some of the differences depending on what you wanna do. So building the tower, that's actually me yesterday. And like I said, that cattle panel, they're built to handle cattle. So sitting on it, I finally got it bent in a circle, but it is doable. And then there's just an example of a guy using a post pounder, for those of you that don't know what that is. And then that's what your finished product should like, look like before you put your, or build your potato tower with your potatoes and your hay. Uh, keep out of the wind if possible. Like I said before, our wind's nasty here and that's, and it'll also dry out your potatoes quicker. So that'll be, I think, very beneficial if you keep it out of the wind. Uh, posts, I pounded mine on a standard T post. It's probably about a foot down. It's got a little T. I pounded that all the way to the ground. I would say rebar, I would send that in a foot too, just so it's sturdy and anchored really well. And then, like I said before, multiple posts may be needed for additional support. All right, so we'll get into planting here. What we did is we took alfalfa, we put it in the bottom, and we made a kind of a bowl in a dish shape. And then I took, I don't know if it's the right amount, I couldn't tell you, but what I felt was the right amount, I took a five gallon pail of compost. And I guess if I had to do it again, I would mix some soil with that compost, because the biggest difference if you use just plain compost versus a compost soil mix is your water holding capacity. So that's probably one of the biggest reasons why you don't want to plant in just compost is your water holding capacity goes down because we don't have any soil aggregates there. But anyways, so that's what I did. And then I placed my potatoes in a circle. I don't think there's any benefit whatsoever to put your potatoes in the middle. I just place them around the outside because when you cover it with the next layer, not that potato's gonna wanna grow up and we want them to grow out. So if you put one in the middle, I feel like you're just wasting seed. And then like in the diagram, I just kept layering. Uh, my biggest one, I got four layers in, so it'll be exactly the same as that. And I think it really has a lot of merit and some potential. All right, so the one on the far right, that's the one that I, or the two I did yesterday. The one I didn't finish yet, because we're gonna mess around with it and try a few things. That one, we're gonna try to do a polyculture. So on top of the potatoes, we're gonna do bush beans because we actually referenced the book, Carrots Love Tomatoes, and that's all about just intercropping different, different vegetables, and it says in there that bush beans and uh, potatoes can get along. So we did bush beans, or we're going to do bush beans in the second layer. It's a little cold yet to start planting them. And then in our third layer, we're gonna do cucumbers because cucumbers get along with bush beans. And then on our top, we're gonna do onions and carrots because they get along with cucumbers. So we're gonna see if it works. Just trying to do something different and maybe if you're a small, or you don't have a lot of space to garden, this might be a potential to grow a few different things, not just potatoes. Yes. Yep. We're gonna try it. I don't know if they will or not, but you don't know unless you try. <laughs> yep, I think the cucumbers will vine out. My only concern is that I think they might shade out the lower layers. So we'll have to see how that goes, but I think the cucumbers would vine out. And then the picture in the middle, that's what it'll look like probably the middle of June when stuff starts to grow. And then once we get closer to harvest, it'll look like the one on the left. So they have tried it and they've done it with sweet potatoes too. So I think we might attempt that too. But it's just an interesting way and it doesn't take up a lot of space. So that's a huge benefit. And then at harvest, all we do is we clip our wires that we tied our posts onto and open it up and everything falls out. 
So that's, we just pick our potatoes out of that compost hay mix, and then any residue we have left, we can just add to the compost piles for next year. So here's some resources. Uh, Nokenfarm.com, we have a lot of different videos on a lot of different topics, whether it's cover crops or many different things in the egg side. Uh, we also have the Minokin Farm YouTube channel, so you guys should go check that out. And here's my contact information, so if there's anything you guys want to learn a little bit more about or have any questions, I'd be more than happy to field those calls and come help you. Any questions? Yes. So she's asking what do we do with any leftover residue? Last year, we just left it. Because it provides cover and soil armor for that ground. So it'll eventually break down and it'll feed our microbes and everything like that. So a lot of times we'll leave our residue there to break down and provide nutrition for the following year. The weeds? You know, it depends on. Sometimes, I mean, we, pick, we hand pick weeds all the time. That's not uncommon. But when you cover the ground, it's hard for anything to want to grow through it, too. I mean, it's similar to putting, like, a mulch down or anything like that. So, yes? What's that? Because, one, I wanted the planting time's different. Because I had that thought myself, but the planting time, it's still a little early for cucumbers. So that was probably the biggest reason. And cucumbers don't get along real well with potatoes, so that's why I had to space them too. Yes? I used alfalfa, and I guess, like I said, if you have the opportunity to get alfalfa, I'd probably go with it just because of that CN ratio. It breaks down a lot more, and you're going to have a lot less nutrient tie-up. Yes, back there. Is there any difference in taste and texture? I'd honestly say no. There's no, di not that one that I noticed anyways. But good question. Yes? Are you talking about what we're going to do with the multi species? Are you talking about using all potatoes? So, like I said, we referenced that book, uh, Carrots Love Tomatoes, because that talks about what different species get along with other species and what species hinder others. So, when I put the cucumbers in the third layer from the bottom, that's because cucumbers and potatoes don't get along. But bush and potatoes get along really well. So, I tried to space them out as far as I can just to see if it would work. Yep, they'll be that top layer, so they'll go grow straight up. Okay. Yep. He said that we've had the most success with the red potato varieties, for those of you that didn't hear it. So that's just good information for anyone that wants to try this. Any other questions? Well, and that was a talk that we had too, that we were maybe even gonna put marigolds in one of the top of them too. So. All right, well thank you for your time, I appreciate it.